Round one. Fight. Heroes never die. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. <laughs> I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Hungry Gamers. Hello, 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 and welcome, boys and girls, to the 99th episode of the Hungry Gamers podcast. We are powered by 8bit.net and Audio Technica. I'm a so humble host, Brendan White, who can be found everywhere at Brendan 8 Bit. Today, we're back with another duo cast. My main man, my main partner in crime today, Salim the Dream Abraham, who can be found at Salim TD. Hey, how are you doing tonight, brother? I'm really, really good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, man. Good. It's uh, it's been a while since I think we've tackled one of these things, mano e mano. So it's uh, you know, let's see how we go getting back in the saddle here for the 99th time. What That's the it. hell? Giving uh, Ali a much deserved, a well deserved break and a much needed rest, no doubt. Um, mm-hmm. She's off entertaining the. What, what was the term she used? The man meat. The man meat. Yep, the man meat is over from the uh, United States of America. So hopefully they are having a fantastic time, full of debauchery and laughs and <laughs> tears and scratch marks. Um, uh. Truth be told, I think, you know, we needed to put her in timeout last week. Uh, you know, she gave us an audio sample for that episode that was a little bit hit and miss. Ali, what are you doing with that microphone there out in uh, in Sydney town? We need to uh, have some words offline about that. But uh, yeah, it's strike one, mate. Strike one. It's surely not the last strike either, Ali. But no. um, that's okay. Don't worry. We'll be sure to let you know where you slip up. I am struggling to talk right now. My face is still very numb. I just got back from the dentist and I I feel like I'm drooping on one side. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it feels very much like one side of my face is doing all of my talking and the other side of my face is doing not a lot of anything. I'm, I'm certainly seeing a little bit of droop. Like you're still, uh, you know, dashingly handsome. Like, uh, you know, no, no ifs and or buts around that, but... Yeah, there is certainly um, some change in the facial structure there from from the dream. Um, you know, you're more of like a, a daydream now, not a full fledged, you know, deep sleep dream. <laughs> sort of just like a little afternoon nap sort of vibe. Like, you know, you'd still get taken home. You know, if you're the last man on the dance floor type of thing. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, the uh, the usual uh, debonair, chiselled heartbreaker look is a little little off today. It's but. never. It was never there in the first place. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I wonder if like we listen back to this, if my, um, my audio is going to sound very different as we go. Um, slightly you just more start like slurring like this or something. I was a mess in the dentist, man. I was an absolute mess. After they were all done with me, I like could not feel my face at all. And then she's like, okay, just, you know, rinse, rinse. And I turn my head, pick up the cup, have a sip of water. It all comes rushing down <laughs> out of my mouth and all over my shirt. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, what have you done to me? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nightmare. Like the dentist is obviously an essential evil. You know, you know words, words of wisdom for anyone out there. If you do have teeth problems or pain, go get that shit sorted out oh, straight God. away because just it can either- get so bad. Yeah, either do or don't, because I'm stuck in this middle ground where I just don't really sort anything out. I just keep going back to get sort of um, quick fixes done. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like if I never saw a dentist, I'd be fine. But because I went once and got this thing, I've just got these yeah. band-aids on band-aids on band-aids. In for a penny, in for a pound oh, type of situation. Fucking killing me, man. Absolutely <laughs> killing me. But hey, this You're isn't here. the... Yeah, that's it. I'm here. This isn't the Hungry Dentist's. This is Hungry that, Motherfucking Gamers. That would be an interesting podcast, actually. The Hungry Dentist talking about tooth decay and the excitement, adva- exciting advancements in plaque. And who knows? Maybe uh, the- we'll go back to school <laughs> and learn about it and we'll make an offshoot. I want to know what the exciting advancements in plaque look like. Let's, uh, in plaque, plaque prevent- prevention? Yeah. See, there you go. See, you're um, learning already. You're on the fast track to, to being a full-fledged dentist. You know? From episode 101, this is The Hungry Dentists. Mm-hmm. I reckon yeah. we'll do an offshoot. I'm pr- I reckon I'd be pretty good. You know how they put that like 
sort of wet vacuum in your mouth to suck up all the excess oh. t- bits of teeth and water. I reckon I'd be pretty good with that thing. I felt like that was down my throat this mm-hmm. afternoon. Um, I, I hate when they put the gauze up up in your mouth, up in, I had, up in here. Yeah, had that. Obviously, this is a great visual medium that no one can see right now. But uh, yeah, when it's up and around the roof of your mouth and your gums, I hate it. Yeah. Brendan, we are itching, itching or edging. We're edging very close to episode 100. This is the mm-hmm. episode before episode 100. Mm-hmm. Um. I just want to point that out because I feel like uh, this is a milestone I didn't think we'd ever hit. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Me neither. It's um, I was actually I had a bit of a bit of a moment the other day actually. Well, I think when I was sort of chopping together the last episode, and um, yeah, I thought, holy shit, we are mm. going to notch up a century worth of podcasts. Mm. It's it's insane. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know why people keep tuning in. Maybe it's your uh, rugged good looks or Ali Sass. Who knows? It's your but, quick um, takes, mate. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But um, yeah, this is the 99th time we've uh, done this dance. Mm. It's nuts. Very different from episode one. Is that still on iTunes? It is still on iTunes. Uh, um, I actually had a listen, a bit of a listen to it the other day because I've been no. migrating. I've been migrating everything from stored just locally on the computer to to Google Drive just to sort of free up a bit of space and and you know, obviously secure files and such. But um, yeah, we were a hot mess on that first episode. I'll tell you, it wasn't very good. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I imagine it's quite funny to listen to now, but it wasn't very good. Um, we we will be doing the hundredth episode next week. Um, should we talk about this a little bit now? I yeah, feel like let's we, we get it should, out of the way. I think. Yeah, so so at that time of recording, obviously it's Wednesday, twenty uh, eighth of March. Next week would entail the typical release of episode one hundred, but we're actually going to push it back another week. So it'll be two weeks from day of release, just because we've got some pretty cool things uh, planned. We're going to get a lot of guests uh, H- in some Hideo different Kijima. segments. Yeah, Hideo um, and a whole heap of other people we're still under NDA about. So you'll have to wait and tune in to hear just exactly who we've managed to line up for this 100th episode. Like, it's it's a pretty big deal. And that's why it's taken this extra week because they've got busy schedules. Uh, you know, we want to try and make this thing as polished as possible. So, yeah, you won't hear from us for a fortnight after this one, but then we will be back with a massive bang on episode hundo. So... Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And Clan or Sham. A Clan or Sham. Yes, it'll Clan be back. Clan or Sham. It's back yeah. for special, a brand new season. Special uh, return to the 100th episode. Um, we're still trying to refine how we're going to put all that together, but it's going to be hell of a time. I'm going to be baiting and switching clans and fake clans like there's no tomorrow. We may even make some of our guests play a bit of Clan or Sham. Who knows? It's uh, it's all up in the air. We've got a lot of cool balls getting juggled at the motions at the moment. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, Eight Bit Nation. Mm. But dream, Brilliant. we're here today, ninety ninth mm. episode. What have you been playing this past week? Tell me the things. Give me the gaming insight that Salim the Dream Abraham has uh, undertaken the past week. I'll tell you what I haven't been playing in the last week that I'm keen as a jelly bean to get my hands on though. Far Cry 5. Yes. Uh, so that's just yes. dropped. I haven't mm-hmm. picked it up just yet. Um, not for any particular reason other than it only came out yesterday at the time of yep. recording and I just don't have it yet. Uh, but I'm so keen for this game. The world is blowing up about this game thus far. Um, have you got that yet? I've I know got you, it. You haven't- I've got it. I've played about two hours worth. Right. So I, I don't really want to give my feedback on it this episode. I think I'll probably reserve that for when I've dove a little bit further into it, mm. um, because some other games I'll talk about is what sort of con- consumed my uh, my gaming habits this past week. So, but initial reports as far as little quick hot takes, as we do love to throw some hot takes around here on love THG. Hot takes. Far Cry takes. Five is pretty freaking fun. And it's fucking gorgeous. I actually played it like this is one of the first games I bought direct on PC as opposed to go on console. Really? And it is so pretty. Holy that's what your, shit. That's what your relationship's doing to you, I think. I know. That's your better half. I know. Mm. Yeah. For better or for worse, she's converting me slowly into a PC gamer. 
actually felt bad. Like I sort of looked at my Xbox One X and it was sort of, I just felt like I've been neglecting. It's like this little redheaded stepchild in the corner. I'm like, I still love you, little Xbox One X. I'll come back. But right now, my shiny PC needs me. I'll see you later. I am so excited for this game because it's my first Far Cry game. I have not played a single Far Cry to date. Uh, I feel like it's my my shame. It's my secret shame. Um, that and Uncharted. Oh, I nearly I nearly spat water um, when you mentioned the Far Cry thing. But even the Uncharted, like, damn, they are yeah. two very big pillars in the gaming community. I know. Um, I know. I'm very sorry. Far Cry. I, I think you're going to love Far Cry Five. Are, are you going to? Mm. If you're going to get a little hot tip, you can get it off green man gaming on pc for about 52 bucks us so it comes out at about 58 59 australian or 60 australian hey something like that so that right. could be worth a look might do that um i will do that i love love a good bargain what have i been playing this week though uh so pokemon go i didn't talk about that with you but i, I don't know if you heard man I'm, I'm basically the very best like no one ever was really um yeah i'm the very best like no one ever was. I mm. realize though I've been doing it wrong. Have you... You don't play it at all anymore, do you? Not anymore. Like, so, so there's, a, there's a chance. I was probably doing it wrong too. I'm, I'm one so of... I was different. OG. OG, but yeah, I've, I probably missed the evolution of this game. We were so, all OG. Yeah, I missed it. I missed the evolution and just kind of came in recently at the back end at the start of March. And um, it's really different. But the thing I had wrong was I kept looking at like their combat power and then just keeping the strongest releasing the weakest mm-hmm. you can appraise them and they have like secret stats like real pokemon games um iv stats and basically these are the things you should be focusing on not the cp and i didn't know that and then i figured that out realized that i was keeping a whole bunch of weak dogs on my team and got rid of them straight and you know away the dream so now, ain't got time for no weak dogs so no it's they're the strongest out to or get strongest or get packing Damn. Um, I don't have time for weakness. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's actually, it's, it's been really interesting because it's added this whole new dynamic to the game for me where it's like, okay, not just catching Pokemon, but like catch the strongest fucking Pokemon. Uh, but on the weekend, there was a, an event and this was the first one I participated in for three hours on Sunday. Bulbasaur were everywhere. Between 2 and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there were just Bulbasaurs littering the, littering the roads. I do um, love being a Bulbasaur. I... I loved it. I got three shiny Bulbasaurs and something stupid like 150 other Bulbasaurs. 150 um, other ones. Yeah, I was running, dude. I was jogging. So I had my like runners on, had my little Pokemon trainer kit ready. And just, just like swiping, running, swiping as you go. Just running, swiping, Pokeball, running, Pokeball, and swiping. Pokeball. Try not to like trip over myself, watching my footing on the, the steep hills of Glebe. Um <laughs> It was it was actually a lot of fun, and it's like the third time now. It's is almost I don't know why I'm embarrassed about this because I'm a game and I like sometimes exercise. I don't know why it's embarrassing to do both at the same time. Mm. Um, I think because it's just a, a public affair, you know, playing yeah. in a clo- in confined space, closed doors, all that. You know, you, you're free of judgment, but running as you said along those main streets of Glebe throwing pokeballs you know you are open slather for every glebonite glebonian glebonite what what do you call a local person from glebe we're we're, we're glebonese glebonese i love we're that Glebon- slightly glebonese racist people. but it's fantastic that's fine um interesting uh thing happened to me yesterday though oh sorry just to wrap that up yeah caught a whole bunch of bulbasaur and um tons of bulbasaur candy i've got like an iv 95 venusaur now that's just like baller what's um, um on the iv like what's what's the high s- highest you can get to so it's like as a percentage of oh, how okay. good this pokemon could potentially be like so mine's it's, in the top. it's top tier it's got yeah, like, it's like prestige top- bulbasaur bloodlines yeah it's in the top sixth percentile of oh my bulbasaur. goodness yeah of venusaur really um so i was i was coming home from the pub last night and uh it was like i don't know 10 30 11 and i'm walking down my street and it's a bit of a quiet street and there was this woman uh in her sort of looked like she was in her like evening like pajamas standing on the corner just kind of like not doing anything just kind of like looking around had a phone in her hand uh and she was kind of watching me go by and i'm sort of half cut 
suspiciously watching her go mm-hmm. by. So I think that's my messenger going off. That won't happen again. Yeah. So there's this woman not. who's in her evening wear. <laughs> She's in her evening wear, suspiciously watching me go by. I'm suspiciously keeping an eye on her. I'm wondering if she's like a crazy person. Then I noticed the phone in her hand. I was like, oh, she's probably just catching Pokemon. That's all she's doing. She's just out there catching Pokemon. Wow. So, so you did you ever think she was a lady of the night? No, she didn't look like that. Um, she didn't look suggestive in mm-hmm. a lady of the night manner. Uh, it was more... She looked like she was about ready for bed, realized that there was a, a gym battle to be won or something, and uh, cruised out. And I, I respect I, that hustle. Yeah, I know that that's possible because that's exactly what I've been doing for the last few <laughs> nights. Um, anyway, Pokemon Go aside, I've been playing another uh, classic, um, Final Fantasy Fifteen. <gasps> All right, so hear me out. Just don't, don't jump down my okay. throat. I'll reserve judgment. Okay, so the Royal Edition came out. And we, uh, not we, but I, I've always said that when this game kind of actually is complete, I would like to revisit it and see what the experience is like. Because I think that it, they obviously released an un, com, or an incomplete version. Mm-hmm. Um, they're patching and patching and patching like crazy. So once they're sort of done, I want to go back. And we're at that point now, two years later, or a year, a year and a half later. And so they released this new game. So you can actually pick it up in stores, the Royal Edition, or if you already have Final Fantasy XV, you can get the Royal Edition Royal Update. Um, Is it a free update or do they charge you for it? Okay, so it's not too bad, I think. It's 65, 70 bucks, I think, for the full version game. But what you get with that is you get all of the um, season pass content, which is like episode Prompto and episode Ignis and Gladiolus. Um, You get everything basically in this Royal Edition Mm -hmm. that's come out to date, including as well the multiplayer stuff. Okay. If you just get the update, um, you'll only get the Royal Edition content. And that's basically like expanded maps, additional quests. There's like a boat now. You can get a boat. You can turn your car into a boat, I think, is the, is the dealio there. What can't that goddamn car turn into? That's the regalia. Ridiculous. Yeah, she's a plane and now she's a boat. I mm-hmm. think the regalia turns into a boat. Either that or you get a boat. Okay. Uh, I'm not up to that bit just yet. Maybe it's the boat that you take from that swanky resort. Yeah, well, it's for that. I think that's Aos and that's like the area where your boat becomes um, part of the game. Okay. Because that was all like sea, but that was like very Venice, that, that map. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was very frustrating because there wasn't really a clean way to get around it. Is, um, is there, on, on this Royal Edition, is there clarity on the story yet? Or is it still some big gaps in time where you need to sort of know a bit more of the backstory to completely understand what's happening with certain okay. scenes? So I am very, I wouldn't say very early, but I'm I'm past the the kingdom falling bit at least um it's a it's still clear as mud unfortunately but i i don't know that's hard because i know exactly what happened so it's kind of hard to really mm. um reimagine what i'm what information i'm getting and how that informs my like opinion of what's going on in the game um I think it's still mostly unchanged for where I'm at. And this wasn't really the part I had a problem with. I think the part that everyone had a problem with was much later. And there's been a lot of work done to the second half of the game. So that's what I'm trying to tap into at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, what I am really taking uh, in at the moment, though, is how well they really reappropriate Final Fantasy um, constants, like constant characters or how well they've done with actually um, changing the existing mechanics and repurposing them for specifically Final Fantasy 15. So like um, I was doing, do you remember the behemoth hunt? Yes. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. That's amazing. Like I was doing that again last night and I was actually blown away by how well that one hunt goes. The problem is that it's the only hunt like it. The mm. rest of them are just kind of like, okay, go here, kill five of that, come back. Yeah. Um, whereas this one kind of takes you like there's a part where you've got to sort of stalk the behemoth. The behemoth actually looks freaking terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the best the behemoth's ever looked in a Final Fantasy game. And I think that that's kind of impressive as a fan of the series. Um, and I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't really 
you know, appreciate that as much the first time around. I think I was probably, you know, like everyone else, trying to wrap my head around the game and exactly what's going on. Um, and also, yeah, like the mechanics, like the magic stuff, I'm actually really appreciating more now as well. So the crafting system there, um, it's ripped straight out of like Final Fantasy Type-0, which came out a little bit earlier. It was part of that whole um, Final Fantasy Fabula Nova Crystallis, like 13 Type-0 in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's cool. Like I really enjoy it. And I also enjoy uh, the world and Noctis and his friends. Like I never had a problem with that. I really like being in this world. Uh, it's so annoying that the game sucked at the end so much the first time yeah, around. Yeah, it, it hurt. It hurt. Like it, it held me and I held the game in such high regard for that first act. And then the second act, yeah. you know, it started to get a bit shaky. And then the, the, the third act was, yeah, rough. You know, we don't need to sort of go in and throw darts at it any more than we already have over the past 18 months. But um, mm. yeah, I guess it'd be cool to for anyone that hadn't experienced it the first time to maybe go back and pick up this Royal Edition, what do you say? It was 60 bucks or 70 bucks for yeah, the whole it's, lot? It's like 70. If you've already got the game, just get the update. Uh, it doesn't mm. come with the season pass stuff. So like, I, I don't have the season pass stuff because why would I? Um, mm. But it, the episode Ignis Prompto, all of that stuff's still missing. I actually am feeling more inclined to buy it now though because Ooh. it's just like, it's just good. Like I, I, I think that that's going to, again, form part of this whole experience and I, I, I think that's kind of important to capture. So so the one bad thing about it though, uh, and I think this was available from like day one, but I just wasn't using them. You get these additional weapons from the start with codes, Gay Bolg and, and Mass Immune, and they're just like, they're, they're very overpowered. Um, why overpowered for like the start of the game? And it just makes it so easy uh, mm. to run around and level up. And I feel like that is boring. Uh, it's so boring and I, I screwed up because I actually started out using these weapons thinking, oh yeah, cool. I've kind of got these these badass sort of immortal weapons, um, these Final Fantasy favorites and then realized very quickly that the game is not challenging at all mm. with them in the first part. So scrap those. If you're going to play this again, scrap those okay. weapons. Don't yeah, use I'll, the... I was just about to ask for anyone new to say Final Fantasy if they would make the experience better or worse uh, I'd say worse just because you're not really getting sort of a true a true like experience uh, as a player and the one thing you know what else you get you remember did you ever see that movie Kingsclave the Final Fantasy one yeah it was great you know the suit that yes. that guy wears in the end that um, fights whatever that guy's name is uh, you get one of those really yeah I've got one of those I haven't put it on yet because like for the same reason as Gay Bolg and Massimir like I just think it's just going to be easy to mode, but yeah yeah i could roll around and kill insomnia as that guy again that'd be cool yeah that's cool i, mm. I like that i like that i yeah my my time is done with that game like i'll, I'll wait for final fantasy 16 no doubt to drop i don't know 2026 17 years time yeah, yeah. or <laughs> i'll just wait for this episodic final fantasy 17 remaster or remake uh, they're doing i'm keen yeah. to give that a go whenever we get that first experience for a chapter one or episode one or however they're going to title these things. But um, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm that's, just done. That's so far away. I reckon like <clears throat> that's, that's easily, you know, not this side of 2020. Do, do you think we'll see anything at E3? I don't think so. I think I, well, I hope not. I really hope not because I really hope that Square learnt their lesson about hyping games too early and for too yeah. long. Yeah. Um, no, fair call. But that's what I hope. What will happen? Fuck it. We'll see. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? So you've been doing anything else apart from uh, doing a little bit of a nostalgia tour the past uh, just week? Been doing, doing the usual other stuff, playing more tech and playing more Fortnite. Fortnite's kind of made it into my... Um, what's the best way to rotation yeah like rotation like it's now a game that i feel like playing wow. sometimes yeah yeah you know what i mean like you know yeah. you're just like oh i'm in a fortnite you got the kind itch. of mood 
yeah i'm in a, i'm in a yeah i'm in a PUBG kind of mood i'm in a Tekken kind of mood i, I have a Fortnite kind of mood now nice ha- have you been rolling with sort of a crew or some other mates or are you just sort of just been solo and still you you uh you wouldn't believe it i haven't but i've kind of got a second in none other than my Tekken rival mood moods oh really He's, yeah itching and ready to go the enemy uh, of my enemy has become my I don't want to say friend, but it's Fortnite acquaintance, I guess it could be. I think it'll be fun playing with a person I hate. Like, you know what I mean? Like a person I really just don't like. I, th- I think it'll actually make for a more interesting experience. I um I screwed up. I think last week we were talking and I, ke- I, s- I made a comment about how your rank or your placement in like the game when you're done is not necessarily the order in which you've been killed. Mm-hmm. Like it is in PUBG. Uh, I was way fucking off. Just unbeknownst to me, I was playing team mode. Uh, without a team like i didn't have a team and i was looking for markers on the map to like where are my team guys and they Mm -hmm. were nowhere uh so i was soloing the whole bloody time so so you were just solo queue but in squads yeah in squads yeah yeah because because i remember you mentioned that last week and and obviously i was a bit confused but like i hadn't played enough to sort of know right or wrong so i was like okay that makes sense like i guess it's a point of difference for the game too but uh but like i actually believe that when i said it (laughs) because i thought like when i first noticed i was like well that's ludicrous like why if i died um and if i was in top 20 or whatever why am i not 20 why am i seven um that doesn't make any sense at all but okay whatever Fortnite. and yeah it turns out i'm just an idiot so Uh, you're all right i probably switched to solo I think the highest I've come so far is fifth. Fifth? That's not yeah. bad, though. I, and solo, that's still pretty respectable, man. Yeah, I, f- I feel like I might have a better shot with a keyboard and a mouse, but I like the progress I'm getting with my, my PlayStation copy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, sure. yeah, that's really been it for me, mate. What about yourself? What have you been up to? Um, the, the usual... Also Fortnite, right? No, I haven't played any Fortnite more since um, really? last week. I, I want to, right. and... Uh, was planning on potentially doing a bit of streaming of it tomorrow, maybe, but uh, a bit more PUBG customs. We're running a um, a PUBG tournament uh, in the end of April, so sort of just honing them skills, doing a bit of Mad Max, which is uh, one of the one of the sort of custom game modes you put together where there's no guns in the in the map. There's merely only and vehicles, and obviously you can get guns from the, the care packages via the airdrop. So it's just vehicular based chaos and carnage it's it's so primitive but it is so fun um it's probably my favorite mode or thing to do in PUBG these days i'm a bit sick of just general combat and stuff at the moment so doing stuff like that breaks it up and keeps a little bit fresh very cool um outside of that still a little bit more wwe supercard um haven't haven't spent another dollar since our last discussion so i feel like i'm on the road to recovery there so impressed uh, i've got a, i've got a pretty gangster deck these days uh my wwe superstar supercards would probably pwn the majority or murk the majority of dogs out there to take a page out of your book thank you um and lastly i've been playing an absolute ass load of sea of thieves yeah talk me through this it is so fun it is probably one of the funnest gaming experiences i've had that i can remember in the last several years um it's so easy to play um it's so cruisy um obviously especially if we're, we're going to talk about like on the ocean and ship-based puns but uh the 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 fact that with xbox game pass you can play this game for two weeks for free if you want at the moment via you know the the free 14 day trial via game pass so you can play this on xbox or windows 10 pc um get on it cheapest chips obviously free but otherwise if you pivot to game pass it's 12 bucks a month um it is so fun uh, i've been playing a lot with rachel as well as with nato with benny and a couple of other people that i know as well and it's just a hell of a time uh rare have done an unbelievable amount of work with this game obviously they've had more betas and closed alphas and open alphas and tech stress tests that i've ever seen on a game prior to release but you can see it in the final product. Like it's got a good amount of polish. Uh, the, the art style is is a bit fun. Like um, it's not hyper realistic as far as your your pirates go. There is a bit of a cartoonish caricaturesque element to it. But uh, the environments themselves, like 
the water effects, the the sun rays, the sunsets, the clouds, all that kind of stuff, the weather effects is freaking stunning. Um, I find myself a lot of time when we're cruising just out to sea, just, you know, taking in the sights, like looking through my, my spyglass into the distance, looking at potential storms coming in. You, you know, you go through the uh, Aurora Borealis in a few parts and it's it's a sight to behold. And um, rolling around on your galleon, which is the largest ship, you've got two options. You've got sort of a smaller two-man ship, um, which is your sploot. And then obviously the the larger ship, which is your galleon, which can support up to four players in your party. Um, and it's just, I just love the, the level of detail in this game. Like you're on your ship, obviously you're cruising around your galleon, but you've got to obviously monitor your sails, the, the height of them, the angle of them, raising, dropping anchor. When you sort of go engage in sort of sea battles with other, other ships, you take damage. So you've got to patch holes up in your ship, get all like get a bucket to get all the water out uh obviously prime the cannons refill the cannons all this type of stuff like it's very 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 well done as far as capturing that sort of seafaring pirate-esque sort of flavor that they're going for like i think rare have nailed that um a couple of things i guess that i love and hate is there is no sort of mini map unless you're sort of looking downstairs at the the main map it'll show the ship and you sort of navigate i guess like it's trying to stay pretty true to how i guess it would have been in those days there isn't sort of a, a HUD where you can see, okay, there's there's the icon for the quest. Just follow that. You do have to actually navigate the seas like like a proper pirate would. So I think that's cool, but um, I, I might upset a few people with that because there isn't any hand holding there. Yeah. Um, same as on the islands themselves. Like if you jump off with your squad, or with your crew. Sorry, that's probably more more appropriate for pirates. Um, the second your crew members are out of sight you can't see them. There's no like glowing name in the distance showing where Salim TD is or um, Ah. NATO is. So there is a lot of teamwork required and a lot of cohesion when you are trying to um, do some of the, some of the quests in the game. But that seems like it could be just as much an opportunity for fun and, you know, an enjoyment as opposed to just being an inconvenience or a grievance. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I, I've, you can't like, sw- all right, let's talk about this expression for a moment. Swing a cat. Mm-hmm. Is that cool to say? <laughs> I don't, I don't know anymore. I feel like if you're swinging a cat, that's cruel and it's just not on. Um, why would you swing a cat? Who swings the cat? I don't know. So this is the thing, but the expression is you can't swing a cat without da, 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 da. You know, mm-hmm. bumping into something of of whatever the hell you're talking about. So, if, for example, you can't swing a cat at the moment without hitting um, a story about how um, uh, Sea of Thieves is just like No Man's Sky and how it's boring and it's dull and it's you know, nah, truth, tr- tr- like I, I call bullshit to anyone saying that at the moment. Like it might be uh, sailing solo, but mm. playing with three other personalities, the banter, like you're on the ship and you can obviously steer the ship work the sails get in the crow's nest scout locations you can play instruments so you can start you know doing sea shanties on the on the ship as well the back and forth there's you know certain areas you come past and there's sunken treasure so you can drop anchor dive under the in un, like into the sea mm. you know, go through sunken ships to get treasure combat sharks have battles with sort of these skeletons that's that's actually one gripe i've got is there's only really one enemy type apart from obviously actual other human controlled characters which are other pirates is everything else that you're fighting outside of a shark and the cobras on every freaking island is their skeletons that's the only enemy type there's a few different types of said skeleton but it's just the same thing over and over so i'm Mm. hoping they add some more variety to that because it does get a little bit sort of tiresome swinging a sword or shooting a blunderbuss at just wave after wave of uh, skeleton pirates yeah i yeah I, look, I, I don't have this game yet either. I don't know. Like, I, I last week I didn't know if I wanted to pick it up because of the sort of feedback we were hearing. But I don't know, man. You sound like you're having a fantastic time with it. It's, You've got the right crew for it. NATO's an idiot. He's, yeah. he's by far the <laughs> biggest um, pirate I know uh, in the best possible way. He's just dove right into character. Like, 
he he's just sort of naturally assumed the role of captain for the most part and he's he's steering the <laughs> ship and you know he'll be like all right raise anchor get the sails duh, 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 you know whatever pirate mannerisms <laughs> benny's a crack because he just slips into pirate mode and he starts talking like a pirate and singing shanties and things so it's it's those little experiences on the top that make it better because you just find yourself pitching yourself laughing at just dumb nothings um, and then you just sail in the seas like not a whole lot might happen actually in you know your two or three hour uh, block of game time but you, it's just the personal experiences from these other larrikins that you're with that make it I think but isn't um, that, that and like that reminds me so much of Minecraft yeah it really does yeah, obviously, from just from things I've heard from you and other people, I still haven't played Minecraft. I can't believe Sh- shame some. on me. See, because you haven't played with us. Yeah, and there's um, what is it now? Like, there's a new mode that just came out, and it's Minecraft mixed with Ark, and there's actually dinosaurs in it now that came out this week. What is it called? They made it for you. I don't know. Mm. I I haven't actually heard of that. What is it? There's a Minecraft Ark mode. Uh huh. Yeah, it came out this week. Um, I was talking to. Uh, Orange Ocelot and uh, Mama Orange Ocelot about it earlier this week, and yeah, it's it's dinosaurs in minecraft i'm like ooh, if anything's going to get me into minecraft it may be this so who knows who knows maybe i'll try it one day but man just just give sea of thieves a go like just get game pass cost you nothing for two weeks feel it out uh because you never know what's going to happen on your playthrough like we we mm. were sailing on our way to find some buried treasure uh, you know trying to solve riddles to, to find where this treasure is buried on an island and then just the big kraken comes out of the water and you know, stops your ship dead and you've got to try and fight this Kraken or, or maneuver your way out of it to avoid it. Uh, what's, just, your, uh, what's your Kraken fighting abilities like? You any good? Not, not bad. We we died yeah. on the first. We've, we've had two Kraken experiences. The first time it took us down. The second time though, we actually, you know, wrecked it pretty, pretty, uh, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Convincing. You murked it. Convinced, you murked we, it. we murked that Kraken dog. Yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> but it's insane because things like that, like, the strategy and the teamwork that you just need to slip into straight away. It's like, okay, I'll I'll run down and I'll be in charge of fixing the repairs when this thing, you know, wraps its big tentacles around the ship and punches holes everywhere. You guys man the cannons, you you man the you know the the rifle and and shoot it when it opens its sort of mouth on the tentacles. And there's so much sort of things that have got going on that you need to sort of negotiate and uh, work together to succeed in. It's great. I am going to get Game Pass, and you're right. So, and just to sort of expand on that, Game Pass at the moment, Sea of Thieves is one of the first games, um, or one of the like, mm-hmm. one of the launch titles, I guess you could say, for Game Pass. Yep. Um, which dropped earlier this month. So, for yeah, like you said, for two weeks free trial, or what is it uh, a month? Like eleven it's, bucks? It's twelve bucks a month. Twelve bucks. after that. So yeah, it's it's next to nothing. You, you play this for the next two three months. Let's say thirty six bucks. You've got Sea of Thieves, over a hundred other games, and then by then, State of Decay Two is going to be out as well, and mm. Crackdown Three. So you've got three Microsoft exclusives for thirty six bucks, plus an, a back catalog of you know hits that you could play anytime you want on Xbox or um, Windows PC, depending on um, which game it is. Are you are you on PC or are you on Xbox for Sea of Thieves? I've got it. Well, it's cross platform, so I've got it on my pc and on my xbox so i can play it on either or and it'll carry carry my save over and i can play with people on either platform as well that's so good yeah and it's, it's great man it's just so fun so fun and just sailing the seven seas being a being a pirate you know digging for treasure trying to take down skeleton forts which is sort of like little mini raid areas but then just while you're trying to take them down have another rival galleon come up on you so then you've got a sea battle with four other pirates as well as trying to kill waves of skeletons it's it's intense man it's so fun so fun but we we defeated a skeleton fort the other day and felt like freaking kings (laughs) i i'm gonna go now and download this after this podcast immediately after this podcast hells yeah man hells yeah like you'll i think you'll really enjoy it especially the, the social like getting on here with the crew having fun dicking oh, yeah. around in the ocean you know swinging a sword and shooting a shooting a blunderbuss it's a hell of a time and you get drunk you can get drunk on the boat and you get that drunk then you vomit everywhere like rachel got drunk on the boat the other day and spewed all over me and that i couldn't see because i'd vomit all over my face and she's stumbling everywhere and you know, people are you singing do? sea shanties in the back like it's intense what do you got to do you got to like swim to get the vomit off your face or uh it, it just timed out after like you know 
90 seconds or 120 right. seconds it sort of uh, dissolved off out of my vision but it was it was nuts it's so fun sounds fun yeah i <laughs> it's a bizarre thing to be in a game is your vision distorted from vomit mm-hmm. um cool cool as shit all right well um in episode 101 you'll hear more about that in episode 100 happening in two weeks uh you'll get what you're given <laughs> uh should we jump into the news is there anything I- else you've been playing Nah, nah, not really. Just the other usual suspects. So yeah, let's let's jump in. Cool. This week's news headlines. Okay, so the the first uh, bit of news on the docket for today is the latest patch in Destiny Two. Um, mm. You know, a game that in in like that I've sort of fallen away from. You know, Dream, you sort of fell away pretty early in the piece. But yeah, uh, yeah they've released patch one point one point four. Uh, which has updates to weapon damage, nightfall strikes, exotic drops, chances, as well as a few other things. Um, it's interesting what they've actually done with this patch is they're changing the meta substantially. They're with changing this game. everything. Yeah, yeah, like like they're just making a lot more. Like the game to me was already pick up and play. Like it was very accessible, but the mm. fact that they've they've boosted damage across the entire range of weapons, uh, some up to like. Like pot fusion rifles are up to fifty percent damage boost, so like these yeah. guns are just going to start melting faces even more. Um, and then they've also altered functionality as well as perks and abilities on said weapons. Super regeneration rates have been increased. Uh, movement speed, melee uh, cooldowns. Yeah, like it's just it's going to be just a a sight for your eyes. Really playing this game now, things are just going to be popping left, right, and center as far as your supers and and rockets. So, um, so what they yeah, so what 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 they're doing at the moment i think is really opening up the pve elements so all those damage increases it's all pve only but um it makes and also they're increasing as well just on that note the uh likelihood that you'll get things like exotics mm-hmm. um or legendary weapons or things like that um and they're also decreasing the chance of you if you're playing a roster what a roster no a playlist uh sorry that you'll have the same map twice if it's a pvp map or a pve map right yeah, so they're which making is good. It, yeah, oh, absolutely. But they're making PVE easier, um, and they're making the ability to get uh, cool loot easier. Um, so that I, I think they're just doing their best to bring people back in um, and incentivize uh, people to actually play the game again. I don't yeah. know what PvP is going to look like because well, with the increased cooldowns, especially the increased melee cooldowns. Um, that's just gonna and like I'm, rip it up. Like it, it was. Yeah. I think we both agreed on this. It's the best first-person shooter I think I've played in terms yeah, of look it, and it's feel. Got, it's got some of the tightest um, gun mechanics in mm. in any FPS that I can remember. Like it, it just feels great. Um, yeah. So I'm wondering how it's gonna feel. You know, going back and getting this almost god mode attached to some of your weapons <laughs> now. Um, and yeah, like they've done other things like with Iron Banner. You've got a 6v6 mode now, so mm. they've brought it back to how it was in Destiny 1. Uh, you've got spawns more quickly now uh, when you are dying in multiplayer modes. Uh, one of the other things I actually liked is when you defeat a, an enemy player that's carrying the power ammo, or actually drop half of that on the ground. As you yeah. know, with the power ammo, it's it's few and far between as far as PvP um, as spawns with PvP. Yeah. So I like that. Where, that was the hottest shit in PvP always. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. You, get, you get the sword ammo. ammo or the rocket launcher ammo, and then yeah. you just run around and, and merc dogs as, uh, you know, we've been we've been spamming pretty nicely tonight. <laughs> but um, yeah, and the other one is they've also put some penalties in for uh, people incomplete uh, incomplete matches for PvP. If it is... A regular thing you can get warnings then that would then escalate to a 30 minute suspension from competitive or uh osiris playlist as well so what, what are your feelings on that i know a lot of games do it i i'm for it obviously there is some circumstances where yes there is network issues computer issues life issues whatever it might be but i have played played a few games even on destiny you know to tie it into this where we've had the same guy sort of follow us into matches over and over and he'd afk or maybe you know rubber band on his on his right joystick so he is sort of just looking around so he doesn't get kicked just to get that um that experience and maybe he's got a what what are the the three of coins to increase the chance for an exotic after the match so they are just mm. sort of farming for for those benefits so yeah i'm for it i'm for it as long as it's done the right way and 
it isn't just left right good night to everybody even if there is network based issues or you know server problems and things like that but if it's handled well I don't, I don't see an issue with this kind of thing what about you uh yeah you you, you make a convincing argument I think I kind of I, look I agree I just I've been on the receiving end of these bands before and my view has been that I I reserve the right to rage quit has always been the line I've, I've kind of mm-hmm. had I feel like games especially competitive games you get really worked up um some games like uh like league of legends was the one where i years ago this happened to me it's a 55 minute game and if you know in the first two minutes that you're with a dud squad um that's a fucking long 55 minutes to play and if that happens to you like multiple times in a session it's the worst it's like it's the absolute worst and the problem with not a problem but the problem i had with lol was that like you do it you know, let's say it happens in like January. You have like this problem. You you leave. They give you like a five minute sit out. Mm-hmm. In April or May, months later, like without repeat behavior, I'll have the same thing again. I'll just be like fuck this, and then it's like a twenty minute wait before five games, and it just comes out of nowhere. And I have a problem with this idea that rage quitting is is inherently bad. I love it. I love it on both ends. Like I love rage quitting. It feels cathartic. Because it's like, fuck these people. I don't want to be in their, like, I, want, I don't want them in my life. And I also like making people rage quit. That's, <laughs> you know, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that regard. Like, I think the AFK thing is a different argument though. Like what you're talking about, yeah. I, I agree, is, is a different kettle of fish and should be punished um, in a different way, I think. Yeah, but maybe with more of those long play games, like, yeah, with a, with a game of Destiny 2 and Crucible, you could have a, a round over in five ten minutes so as opposed yeah, to yeah 60 minutes um i i can certainly see it from your point of view uh and and it does get hard even in even in sort of a like any any fps based online multiplayer where you do get paired up or squatted up with a bunch of randos and when they're just utter gutter trash and you're the only one having a crack it does fucking wear on you and yeah. it sort of spoils the experience so I, c- I can see it from your side but i don't know if there's a clear-cut way to sort of balance out across the board for as far as timeouts and potential punishments go um, well it's, I, I wish there would be it's it's tricky like in a in a game like lol you can't kick um yeah and if you do you're really screwed because you can't sub players in but in a game like um destiny surely you can like surely as people leave a game a session more people can join um and just have half that match like surely that's the better option so just why not just use the kick function more yeah yeah no i think that's fair yeah, yeah, I don't du- du- doubling back one cool thing with um sea of thieves is there's an option to to vote to like almost like a mutiny with your crew so you can vote for one particular player to go into the brig so maybe if you do what? get if you do get grouped up and there's just one random and he's off going solo or rogue or she's going you know detrimental to the crew you can cast a vote to put her in the in the jail and then she can only get out or he can only get out by leaving the game or if we choose to then release them out. So um, I like that there is sort of that nanny state option there where you can oh, sort of... Oh um, my God. Yeah. It's, if, it's, I w- if I wasn't already downloading the game, I am downloading it now. Yeah, we, we haven't used it yet, but um, no doubt there'll come a time when you know, NATO, maybe even yourself might just you know annoy me that much. I just feel like... Cast the vote, crewmates. Let's uh, let's put put old mate in time out for a while. I cannot wait to see uh, what that looks like from the mm. inside of a jail cell. No doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, very cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, Destiny Two. Uh, let's just to really neatly wrap this up. Is this enough to bring you back to the game? No. no. Um, I'm I'm waiting for the next major expansion minor expansion whatever we want to scale it as the Mm. the next new bit of story based content when that drops i'll go back and give it a crack you know when the next house of wolves or um oh my goodness i'm having a mental blank now what was the the last major expansion for destiny one the taken king the taken king yeah Mm. like something of that magnitude if that drops in it i'd certainly come back and give it a go then but as far as just increasing damage on weapons and a few other things it's not enough for me to run back to it. I know a few people, like like Nasi for one, who is a Destiny god. He's probably chomping at the bit for this to see what meta that changes, especially in Crucible. Yeah. What about you? 
No, no, not at all. Uh, like, I love it. I think you've got the right approach, though. Because um, we really had a good time playing the Taken King. And I think that, that when the new content, the new PvE content drops, um, it's always a good time to jump in because it feels like a bit of a fresh slate, clean slate mm. for everyone. Um, it's no fun kind of going in and people are just like, you know, max light level and you're still scrounging for shitty, um, you know, shitty weapons and gear. 100%, 100%. So, yeah, the next expansion, whatever that may be for D2, I'll definitely sort of jump back in. Hopefully, it's got a bit more weight to it than uh, the last one because that Osiris expansion, you finish the main story in like three, four hours max and then it's just yeah. like, fuck, what now? You know? So, mm. give me something I can sink my teeth into, please, Bungie. Mm. Something uh, that the world sunk their teeth into pretty heavily this past week uh, tied into Fortnite, so the game that uh, broke Twitch records last week with Ninja and Drake and a few other sport rap-based celebrities uh, is breaking records again, this time over on YouTube. So uh, Ruben Doblas Gunderson, aka El Rubius OMG, he's a pretty large Spanish YouTuber, got about 28 million subs on there, orchestrated a global Fortnite event on uh, March 25th. And uh, so what he did, he pulled in another 99 YouTube participants and, uh, you know, had a had a, a Fortnite battle going on. Uh, and they drew in over that three hours of live stream, 1.1 million viewers. Boy. Yeah. 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 So I'm not going to pretend to know who the hell this guy is, but... Yeah, I never uh, heard of him until this either. I know 1.1 million live viewers is huge. That's yeah. fucking huge, man. That's like, if you think of, um, like you're a Bulldog supporter, right? In the NRL. Mm-hmm. So if yep. you think of that stadium that they play at, it probably fits in what, like 40,000 people? Yeah, ANZ Stadium, I think can do best ANZ. case 80,000, 80, 80,000, sta- 80, 80, 80, which is still... You know, pales in comparison to this. Yeah, so like that stadium times uh, bad math 12. Something and like a bit, that, yeah. Yeah, it's 12.5. That's fucking ridiculous, man. Yeah, like it's... Like like YouTube obviously is a lot more of an accessible platform to, to say something like Twitch. Like people outside of gaming that just yeah. genuinely browse YouTube for, for music, for documentaries, for whatever. You know, it's got everything on there. So, um... I guess those numbers, like they're still extremely impressive. You know, I'm not gonna not gonna downplay that by any means. Uh, 1.1 million viewers over that three hour live stream is a goddamn hell of an achievement, uh, and no doubt it's probably going to be the first of many that we'll see this type of insanity attached to it. We'll see if there is a bit of a counter swing by Twitch, but I think after the success the other week when they had bloody Drake streaming with uh, with Ninja there. Um, you know, I think they're pretty content with our the money but, that Twitch would be making or the money that Amazon would be making um, via that streaming service is insane. But this is like uh, this is not Fortnite is a revolutionary game. This is hype. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's all this is. But it's just hype building on hype building on hype. Uh, it's fucking nuts. Yeah. Why um, this and not PUBG? Like, why didn't PUBG? Because PUBG kind of enjoyed this success. It did. It definitely enjoyed this level of kind of this game is explosive for yeah. twelve months. It's it's, um, ins- it's insane, isn't it? Like we were talking throughout last year about how PUBG is this unicorn, and we're not going to see a game break into mainstream media and just mainstream society like this probably in in many more years, and yet. Fortnite pub- rolls in off the fucking back of it and says, hold yeah. my beer. This Watch PUBG this. clone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's literally a PUBG clone uh, that, yeah, that's done it. I I don't know what this means. I, like, I'm, I'm trying to look for meaning in this somewhere. Like, is this mean that gaming's only become, like, becoming more mainstream? Is it becoming more socially acceptable? Do people take it seriously at all? And then I kind of look at the game and I look at the 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 people um mm-hmm. and it's just goofy as shit it's like yeah yeah i think I, I think yes it is becoming more mainstream and excuse me socially acceptable and getting more and more sort of airplay across mainstream media 
you're seeing it on all sort of the main big news outlets these days and on the back of that you're getting fucking uneducated news articles written up about oh no it's another violent game that's going to ruin society and, and create shooters in in various cultures it's like fuck off so you get that you know clickbaity one, bullshit one attached culture. to it too it's only it's only one country that's really touting that at the moment mm-hmm. mate. but <laughs> um no one else doubting that but yeah give the teachers the guns yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i i saw um like you know on the on that political sort of topical train i, I saw a great photo doing the rounds the other day and it was like this little eight-year-old child and, and he had sort of his sign up at the, the big protest and he's like i can't even bring peanut butter to school but people are allowed to bring this it's like fuck it's so true it's like people are so more more concerned about peanut allergies than the fucking gun control so uh yeah, yeah but um Tell yeah you, shout out to el just... rubius yeah straight up uh it's very impressive and very clever um and yeah, look, it is what it is. Fuck it. It's it's a good game. I like Fortnite. The thing I really enjoy about Fortnite as well, actually, just to, I don't know, give it a bit more of a, give it a bit more support. It obviously needs it. Um, the, the free-to-play gives you everything. Like, I don't mm-hmm. have to pay a fucking cent to enjoy this game, um, you know, to, to the full extent. Um, the only thing I think really, as far as I can tell, the only thing microtransactions will give me are uh, like Aesthetics. cosmetics yeah i'm not sure if there's actually even any sort of level boosting um things you can purchase that are like double xp or anything like that i think nah, it's just it's, cosmetics it just just ties into yeah um, mods for your for your pickaxe as far as visuals and, and yeah skins for your character so yeah it's all it is see so that's great like PUBG immediately loses because that's what mm. 30 bucks 40 bucks but you know what PUBG that we didn't mention the news here is they've actually released now with your battle points you can get um, a new crate that has different weapon skins in it now so not only can you get minor aesthetics as far as clothing for your character you can now get weapon skins so getting uh, in that CSGO territory now yeah but um, I see what's going on but yeah like sort of I guess yeah as you said rounding off the whole uh Fortnite hype i do genuinely wonder where it would be um without it being free to play like if they had a a monetary attachment even you know 10 bucks or 20 bucks i wonder yeah. if it'd be anywhere near as big as it is today Instant if it barrier. wasn't completely free to play yeah it's, yeah, it's no a complete way. complete roadblock so but you know can't can't fold epic they're making oodles of money <laughs> yeah enough to remember they gave all that money back for paragon yeah like yeah, Who that's how much that? money they're making, bro. <laughs> that's how much money yeah. they're making. Yeah, they're like, you know, oh, hey, Larry, take take this big bucket of cash to the bank today. Nah, I'm busy. All right, let's just give it back to uh to Paragon players, and and you know, we'll give all the assets out for free and shit like that. Like, fuck. speaking of, like, just to tell a personal story it has no real anything here aside from the fact that it's just like another instance of just being carefree with money. My boss at work today came in and he's like, oh, by the way, I'm taking four weeks holiday. I completely forgot. I was like, what? He said, yeah, I booked a holiday to Cambodia at the beginning of 2017. Completely forgot. And now I'm going to Cambodia. So see that you later. Fantastic. So I copped that today. That was interesting. I um, love that. He just, you know, oh yeah, I'll, I'll see you in a month. I'm off to Cambodia. Yeah. I was like, oh, me too. He's like, no, no, Sam, yeah, you'll stay no. here. Yeah. And you're taking all this new pressure on board because I'm going away for a month. Yeah. No, anyway, that's, uh, look, neither confirm nor deny that. I love you. If anyone from work's listening, I hope not. Fuck. I'm I sure it's, I'm I'm sure it's a my great company to work for so and your angry. colleagues are phenomenal. I fucking hate my colleagues. Okay. I'm so angry. But no one knows what company I work for, so it's fine. Fuck you, dreams, colleagues. Fuck you guys. But uh, the last bit of news that I wanted to sort of uh, mention today is the 2018 Video Game Hall of Fame nominees are in slash announced. So uh, I'll rattle these off uh, and, and let me know what you think. Uh, Asteroids, Call of Duty, Dance Dance Revolution, Final Fantasy VII, Shit. Half-Life, John Madden Football, King's Quest, Metroid, Minecraft, Miss Pac-Man, Space War, and Tomb Raider. Um, all right, which one are you picking? Um, Gosh, out of that, maybe Half-Life? Yeah, that's what I'm leaning towards. Not Final Fantasy Seven. Uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 as a Final Fantasy fan and 
staunch apologist. Uh, I don't think seven is actually mm. Hall of Fame worthy. I don't know. Like, I don't think it's the best one either, but fuck, people really get behind it. It's, like, it's, in, it's interesting though. Like, like, look- I, like just saying that there'll be people who will want to fight. People we know will try and fight me now. Oh yeah, I I can think of Perko from Ultra Super Mega straight off the bat. Yeah, Pez, um, who, Pez. Yeah, they're 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 sharpening knives and switchblades as we speak to uh you know bludgeon you with but, repeatedly. But I think Half Life is the bigger game, mm. really. But it's interesting. Like, do you like the way I read? Like, when I see Call of Duty and say Tomb Raider and even John Madden Football, I see them as the franchise as a whole. Yet I see Half Life on its own. I don't know if that's kind of makes no sense to me, but like, yeah, Half Life Two is good though. I, I Half-Life enjoyed Half Life Two. Phenomenal. But like Half Life, Half Life spawned, um, you know, many other games, including like CS. You know, mm-hmm. like it was the it was the basis for like all those Valve add-ons. So, like, do you take those into consideration? Yeah, mm-hmm. Pirates Vikings like, Knights. That was cool. Yeah, um. There was a, even a Dragon Ball Z mod for it. <laughs> That's uh, pretty nuts. It was cool, man. It was actually fucking mm. very close to what you would hope a Dragon Ball Z game looked like in 1998 uh, or 2000 or whatever it was. Mm. Um, I like Dance Dance Revolution being nominated. Yeah. Do you ever play that game? That's a nice little honorable mention. Um, yeah, they were great games. Like I remember the, the character models were fantastic. Mm-hmm. I was very I'm good. Te- I'm terrible at dance games, though. Fuck. I was great as I was one of those kids that had like one hand on the railing behind them and like used to put your weight on that arm and then just like quickly shuffle Ooh. all over the steps. Man, you know who was really good at it? Chinglish. Chinglish, really? fucking amazing at those games. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. He was fucking amazing at those games. That's that's impressive. You know, yeah. it's, it's not often you see a big man being able to you know move with that kind of fluidity. So I, I need to actually find some footage or coax him into doing it one day in an arcade. I don't think it exists, but I just remember like being in Fun World at like 15 years old and like Chinglish would come in, play the, the pump machine, which is like DDR, then play the drum machine, which is the same thing, just drums, and then play Tekken and then fuck off and go to the net cap to play well. So mm. yeah, he can absolutely do that. Vicious cycle. We'll uh we'll try and find some footage if it's out in the wild and uh <laughs> and report back. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe he's got some. That'd be interesting. Maybe maybe uh, he'll just do it at the drop of a hat. Be like, hey man, get on DDR. And you're like, no worries, bro. I like Minecraft being in there. Um, I think that's another one. It's hard though. Like, I, I don't know how you can compare these games. Yeah, because they yeah. all mean something very special um, to gaming. Hundred percent. Yeah, they've all got their own story or success attached to it in in whatever regard maybe genre defining or genre creating Mm. um but yeah like uh half-life and and yeah probably as you said just their minecraft's probably the other one that deserves most of the consideration just for the fact that how fucking goddamn big that game is yeah so should we should we move into the final segment of the pod let's do it itunes review of the week all right so this iTunes review comes to us via way of iTunes user Brave Handlebars. Love that username, by the way. Great username. Mm. So uh, gives us that five stars. So thank you in advance, Brave Handlebars. And the uh, iTunes headline reads, some of my best friends are people I've never met. I like that. It's deep. I feel really, really good. Obviously, uh, that was a quote by Han Solo. So the fact that he's already he or she, sorry, uh, referencing Star Wars in the iTunes review definitely wins some brandy points and a good, uh, you know, audio based thumbs up, which I'm doing right now. Uh, and the review itself reads: You know that feeling when you leave the house and you know you forgot something, but you don't know what. That's how I feel every week waiting for the next episode. Boom shakalaka, ding dong, Dante's peak. That's from Brave Handlebars on March 26, 2018. First of all, uh, Brave Handlebars, thank you very much for the iTunes review. And the iTunes review is amazing. Um, I do not at all get the boom shakalaka ding dong Dante speak thing though, Brendan, do you? Um, I, well, boom shakalaka, I immediately think of NBA Jam. Ding dong, 
Not too sure. Dante's Peak, obviously, like, is that film with Pierce Brosnan in it way back when. Um, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know what kind of threads I, I, I can connect I, here. Yeah, I think it's going to be something. I feel like it's Google worthy though, right? Like, I got I to gotta Google this because you've fucking confounded me, Brave Handlebars. Um, yeah, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, lovely title. My best friends, some of my best friends are people I've never met. Hmm. Where is that in Star Wars? I didn't know that was a Star Wars thing. Um, maybe that ties into the new Solo film. I'm not too sure. Hmm. I'm drawing a blank and I feel very much like I'm betraying Star Wars for not knowing that because I'm such a goddamn fan. But um, Brave Handlebars, thank you for that review. Truth be told, he or she was actually the 100th iTunes review we <gasps> received. No. So the big hundo has hit in episode 99. I've been promising forever to do that on the next episode, on the 100th episode. That's okay. We've got some other oh. ones prepared too. Uh, well, Brave Handlebars, you, you, I want you to know that you're my 100th episode review straight mm-hmm. away. Um, yeah. Technically, technically, we do have a few lost episodes. So if we are... You know, taking, you know, keeping count, we're probably up to episode 105, maybe. Yeah. So, One, 110. Buddy, uh, yeah, Brave Handlebars is definitely the 100th iTunes reviewer in our hearts. Just like all the other iTunes reviewers out there that do keep the lights on in our big beating hearts, you know, it keeps us pushing forward, it keeps us moving. Like it helped get us here to episode 99 today and uh, 100 in two weeks time. So thank you everybody that's oh. taken the time to listen, rate, review, subscribe, share, feedback, good, bad, or otherwise. It, I can straight up guarantee if there were no reviews, there would be no more episodes. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, this thing, this thing would have died a long time ago uh, if we didn't have those reviews coming in at the frequency they do. Like it means a lot and it's very, very, very humbling. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, thank you, Brave Handlebars. Uh, listeners out there that haven't sub- uh, subscribed or reviewed yet may ask why the hell not. Get on that right now. Yeah. Takes two seconds. What's your problem? Yeah, give us a review. We will read every single one of them on this podcast. You think you're better than us? While you're giving us reviews, be sure to give your other podcasts of choice and listening reviews as well because it means a goddamn lot to all of us. So mm. take that 60 seconds if you can to drop your feelings in a podcast review because it means so much Mm. Mm. but uh dream that's been episode 99 this week is anything you want to (gasps) say anything you want to want to um you know alert out there to the uh the 8-bit nation as far as what might be coming up the next two weeks anything you want to mention um sure yeah uh obviously episode 100 is going to be huge and we're um just to, I know we sort of talked about it at the start, but just to talk about it a bit more, we're going to have more people on. Um, 8-Bit has grown substantially. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very scary to me watching um, Brendan, Mark Zuckerberg, my, my fucking uh, share my stake in 8-Bit by just watering it all down and adding like 10 new people, 12 new people. <laughs> um but at the same time, it's it's huge. It just means we've got more more people in the family now to bring on board, like NATO. I don't know what, what did everyone think of NATO. Reach out to me. Let me know. Was he good? Was he bad? You know, you you tell me. We'll we'll cut yeah. in if we need did, to. Did he Brendan, pass the probation period? Yeah, it's up to you guys. It's not up to us. Hmm. Um, but you know, if he goes, there's more. There's plenty of others, and we want to bring them all in for this 100th episode, as many of them as we can, because they are our family and. And they're our friends, and we we absolutely love doing this with them and with you. It's not just the hungry gamers, of course. If you go to eight bit dot net, you'll see the eight bit collective group of podcasts there. Um, I'm excited to bring on my rival, Moo. Moo. Uh, I can't wait for that. Actually, it's going to be a sight to behold, and obviously a sight to then listen to in podcast form once we've recorded. It's going to be a fucking hell of a time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. He's, um, I, like, I, he's, I love him, but I hate him. Mm-hmm. Um, I love him because he's family and you have to, uh, but you have to. So that's yeah. that's about as far as it goes. Um, cool. And to be fair to him, we did try doing something once at EB Game Expo, which I never was able to put 
out because um, I don't know something happened. He might have beat me in Tekken or something along those lines. Um, yeah, I didn't remember quite work that. Out. So I think he's got a lot to say about that lost footage. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's one of the many things we'll be doing on the 100th episode. We're sort of going back in the well, going back to the well, so to speak, to look at all the things we left unsaid, GIF versus GIF, how to cook potatoes, any of the other stupid beefs we started, Mm -hmm. um, and anything else that we can, I guess, think of between now and then. It's going to be a hell of a time. It is. Like, you know, just a bit of advanced warning, it could be a longer episode, depending on how long, maybe we chop it into two, but it's going to be a great time. We've got a lot of people... uh, planned to jump on and give their thoughts opinions good bad and or otherwise Mm. on what's going on get some of their hot takes because maybe you might be getting sick of our usual hot takes week in week out so a little bit more flavor a little bit more spice people like our hot takes i think they do the earth is flat give teachers guns Mm. you know it's pretty pretty straightforward yeah fair call fair call but um yeah that has been our 99th episode uh thank you to audio technica for making a sound and look so good too with their headphones streetwear turntables microphones you know the whole kit and caboodle as far as audio product goes so check out audiotechnica.com.au for that entire catalog of hotness as dream said you can find more content at 8bit.net or by using the hashtag 8bit collective uh, you can find me pretty well everywhere at Brendan 8 bit You can find me at Salim TD. And until, not next week, but until two weeks, 8-Bit Nation, where we come back for the world first 100th episode of the Hungry Gamers podcast. Much love. Stay hungry. You've been listening to The Hungry Gamers, one of many gaming and geek culture related podcasts from the 8 Bit Collective over on 8bit.net. Check out more episodes on your podcast service of choice. And while you're there, please be sure to rate and subscribe. Until next time, boys and girls, stay hungry.